This material is made available to you by or on behalf of the University of Melbourne under Section 113P of the Copyright Act 1968. It may be subject to copyright. For more information, visit the University Copyright website.
All right. Um, this afternoon, what we are doing is essentially practicing the golden formula, okay? Seeing how to use it in practice. Uh, what I'll do, <coughs> so for the sake of lecture capture people, because uh, I have the two screens now and swapping the recording uh, is quite costly in time and my brain. So I'll, what I'll do for the recording is just uh, what I'm writing on the document camera and you guys will also see, oops, you, you can see how confusing that is. Sorry. Uh, super confusing. Okay. The right document camera on the left projector and the computer on the right projector. Okay. Yeah. And all the left, right is behind me. All the weird stuff. Okay. So. What are we going to do in practice? Uh, remember the examples that we saw when we were talking about defining position vectors and uh, angular velocity vectors? We are going to revisit the same examples, but now we are, we are ready to find not only position vectors, but also linear velocity and linear acceleration vectors by taking their by taking derivative with respect to time using the golden formula that I just taught, finished teaching in the morning. Uh, and we will also be able to calculate angular acceleration from angular velocity vectors. Again, by using golden formula to take a derivative. Um, so, you, you can see here, oh, still out of focus. You can see uh, the different examples that, sorry, the, the different things that we are going to calculate for, for these examples. Um, sorry. And I just want to summarize. If we have, so let's say from two, so use the golden formula to get uh, from. So, so I'll give you some examples. So to get angular, sorry, linear velocity vector, you start from a position vector, okay, to get linear acceleration, you start from linear velocity, so you will apply the formula on the vector on the left to get the vector on the right. Okay, and you apply it on angular velocity to get angular acceleration. Okay, so this is position, vector, uh, linear velocity vector, angular velocity vector, And th this one is linear velocity, linear acceleration, and angular acceleration. Now you can apply the formula for essentially any vector. So I'll give you just a few more examples that we are not going to do today, but 
yes going to do later in the subject. So if you have uh, angular momentum vector, you can take its derivative to get essentially the time derivative of angular momentum. And similarly with linear momentum, P, you can get P dot, okay? So time derivative of linear momentum. Why, why do we need these guys? We will use them to construct Newton Euler equations. Okay, so where are we headed to constructing Newton Euler equations? Essentially, these will be, well, roughly speaking, equal to sum of moments, sum of forces on a rigid body. So we are going to construct some equations and these are going to play part in these equations. Okay, and from these Newton Euler equations, we are going to get equations of motion for a system, then integrate these equations of motion numerically and see or get the prediction for how the system would behave over time. All right, so this is where we are headed in the, in the long run. But today, today we are focusing on these for practice and for understanding of how to use the golden formula, okay? Now what is this, uh, so any of these, any of these, uh, by the way, you can, you can do, you can go, uh, you, you can put here any vector essentially, any vector. Yeah, you can put R double dot to get R triple dot, okay? It, it's a general formula that works all the time. And what you are, what you are getting is kind of from the same frame to the same frame, okay? If you use here F, you get the same F here, okay? From the same one to, from the same uh, frame to the same frame. So what, what is here? This is the vector V in the formula, and this will be the vector V dot in the same frame, F. Okay, and the formula is V dot is V prime plus omega F cross the vector itself. I'll just remind you from the morning, if I didn't, uh, or if you weren't here or something. This, what is this? How do you define it in words? Absolute angular velocity of frame F expressed in frame F. Okay, what is this? This is the vector you're trying to take derivative of expressed in frame F. This is its appropriate time derivative. That is how this vector, vector changes over time. And that, <coughs> that change, that derivative expressed in frame F. And this one is what I, what I uh, call component by component derivative of this vector V. So in order to get from here to here, you take each component of the vector V and directly 
take its derivative with respect to time. And what it gives you is how an observer sitting in frame F would think that this vector V is changing, okay? Which might be a wrong perception, okay? If frame F is moving. Any questions before we start the actual practice? Oh, good, no questions. Uh, is there still difficulty understanding the difference between these two? Raise your hand if yes. Yes? Okay. Um, so first of all, I, I'll start by saying that all this column, when we obtain it from the golden formula, we are obtaining this, okay? So this is what I call the true derivative. And this takes into account both the change of the elements of the vector V when it is expressed in frame F. So let's say Vx, so if, if my V in F is V fx, vfy, vfz, these components could be functions of time, yeah? So this part says how each of them, how it changes with respect to time. It doesn't, so this one here, simply take the derivative of each of them. This one here means you will take the derivative in, with respect to time such that you will also, you will consider two things, both how these change with time, with this one, and this will take care of how the axis of this frame change over time. So you take everything into account, and then you obtain the true change of this vector over time, yeah? Because only seeing this without knowing what is frame F, when you take the derivative of each component, you don't know uh, about the fact that these are components along axes that are by themselves rotating. Okay, so you need to take the full derivative or true derivative according to this formula. Okay, now how to actually derive this formula? Look at the past couple of lectures. If any of the steps is blurry for you, let me know, okay? Okay, so let's start with the practice. The first example is this two-link system, and the question is uh, to find find RAC dot in frame one. So because point A in this uh, example is assumed to be fixed point, fixed point, so this is going to be absolute linear velocity. Okay, absolute linear velocity of point C because it's C relative to a fixed point, okay, expressed along the axis of frame one. Now, frame one is a rotating frame. What we can do to obtain this, let's say uh, we can do a few things. One, which you could do, un uh, let's say, until last week, you could say, okay, let us calculate RAC, the position vector, in frame zero, and then we know that frame zero, its axes uh, are constant, they don't rotate anywhere, so we don't need to worry about the golden formula, we can simply take the component by component derivative and it should give us a meaningful velocity vector. So 
take the derivative and then get RAC dot in frame zero. I'll write here by applying the golden formula but in this case you will see that it will simplify to just the prime because omega of frame zero is zero so it, it will be just the component by component derivative and then you can pre-multiply by the rotation matrix from zero to one to get your RAC dot in frame one, which is what you're asked, okay? This is one option, okay? Let's say option A. Option B is on the slide. Let's find RAC in frame one directly, okay? And then use the golden formula to get RAC dot in frame one. So this is, again, by applying the golden formula. I'll just remind you, golden formula is the derivative of a vector in any coordinate system, rotating or not, okay? Okay, so because last two, three lectures we did position vectors, w I think we already obtained RAC, the, the position vector of point C relative to A in frame one. We obtained it, uh, and it was, we, or maybe even if not, this is, this is how to calculate, right? I'm going, I'm summing vectors, it is convenient to go from A to B, from B to C, okay? So what is RAC in frame one? It is this guy here, okay? So first two lines, clear? Yeah? Now, um, how to apply? So RAC dot in frame one, I'm applying the golden formula now, what is the vector V in frame F? V would be the position vector. If we want to take its derivative to get the velocity, we start by the position vector. So our uh, formula is V prime, so RAC prime in frame one which will be the component by component derivative of this, yeah? Plus the absolute angular velocity of the frame in which we take the derivative. What is that frame? Frame one, okay? Regardless of where point C is located, doesn't matter where point C is, if we are working in frame one when applying the golden formula, it has to be omega one, okay? Also in frame one, cross with the vector itself, okay? So RAC unchanged in frame one. Okay, all right? Now, what is, so, okay. Let me copy. RAC in frame one, is this one, L minus L cos beta minus L sine beta zero, okay? And omega one in frame one, what is it? I'll go back. What is the absolute angular velocity of frame one? expressed along the axis of frame one. Zero, zero, alpha dot, okay? 
So this is 0, 0, alpha dot. OK, now RAC prime would be just take the derivative of each of these component, components. So you have it here. OK, derivative of the first component, derivative of the second, derivative of the third. OK? This is, if you are sitting and rotating together with frame one, sitting on frame one, yeah, you will look at the vector from A to C, and you will, what you will see in its change over time is this. This is how you will perceive its change over time. Okay, this is the actual vector itself. This is its change over time, the perceived one within frame one. Okay, this is not the true change. So, so, so now you just need to substitute everything into the formula, and this is what you get. Yeah, substituting everything there. I put omega in red together with all the frames because it's, it goes together. If it's frame one, it has to be absolute angular velocity of frame one in the formula. Okay, it, it's a cause for a lot of mistakes. So I'm trying to repeatedly remind you, okay, how the formula itself looks. So in order to get the actual velocity vector in frame one, we just need to simplify. Okay, so this is the simplification. Okay, any questions about anything? How to evaluate whatever? Now, if you are unsure and you have some time, yeah, what will you do to check? Someone said something over there. So what can you do to check? You can do this, right? <laughs> Someone said, of course. <laughs> uh, OK, let's, let's see what to do. Well, uh, RAC in 0 would be, you can do RAB plus RBC in 0. Sorry? What was the question? OK. Each of them is conveniently found in a different frame, so you can uh, you can do say rotation from one to zero, then R A B in frame one, plus rotation from uh, two to zero, R B C in frame two. Okay, so with this calculate R A C, then you will need omega zero in frame zero, which is what? Frame zero itself is not moving, not rotating, right? So it's all zeros, okay? Zero, zero, zero. Okay? So all you need to do is substitute into RAC dot in zero equals RAC prime Okay, the prime would come from the result here. Just take component by component time derivative. And then plus this omega zero cross RAC. Okay, which is nothing. Okay, so it cancels because this is all zeros. And then as the final step, you will need to do, you will need to colloquially rotate it to frame one. So RAC dot in frame one would be R, uh, sorry, zero to one, yeah, the transpose of this guy, times RAC dot in zero. Okay, so do these steps and make sure you get this. If you don't, it's probably the golden formula wrong. Okay. 
OK. Next example. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry. Same example, RAC double dot. RAC double dot in frame one still. What do we need to do? I'll, I'll bring this uh, page back. Now we need the double dot, so we need to start off with the dot, right? So we need to apply the golden formula on the vector, which is linear velocity. Okay, so let's let's write the the formula. Um, maybe I'll I'll do it here again. So. We are starting our, say, the, the general formula I'm, I'm reminding you is V dot in F equals V prime in F plus omega F cross V F. Okay? Um, so your V in this example, what is it? R A C dot in frame one. Right? So we are plugging this one in. So it will be R A C one prime plus omega one cross R A C dot. Okay, now this one, this one we got from the previous slide, yeah. So this is RAC dot in frame one, okay. We, sometimes I get asked, do we need to get like until the end? Depends. Uh, if you want to get full marks, yes. But if, you, if the next question asks you for something that depends on that, you might as well. Okay, so if, if you need to get the, the double dot, you, you should finish the dot. Okay, so don't, don't tell me it's a, I don't know, repeating mistake or something like that if you have a mistake. Don't have mistakes in, in middle steps. Okay, you want to get your R dot correctly as a condition for not oversimplifying your work for our double dot, okay? Okay, so now the prime is component by component derivative. I can see your expression darkens. This is, this is simple, just just two frames, like just frame one, right? Two rigid bodies in, in plane. It's a planar problem, okay? What is my response to that complaint? Sorry? I'll, I'll say again. Students complain about the length of calculations, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the next slide, I guess. You need to sum the prime with this cross product. So what's my response to this complaint? Use MATLAB, please, all right? <laughs> That's it. In the exam, it will be fine, <laughs> okay. Okay, is it clear? Any questions? Do you want me to do this? Maybe try and do it, guys. As a practice, as a practice, you can do several things. I encourage you to practice. Now, last week someone told me, you told us to, to do this and this, please publish solutions. I encourage you to practice the following. Um, okay, 
get the full solution, okay, get the full solution here, finalize it. It's not on the next slide, I think. Um, and then you can do something else, like uh, when, when you check, and obviously you will, when you do this method, yeah, along the way you will get your RAC dot in frame zero. Keep on going to getting from RAC dot in frame zero, keep going uh, to RAC, sorry, double dot in frame zero, and then using rotation metrics uh, from zero to one to get R double dot in frame one. Okay, and this one using uh, golden formula. Okay, and then check that what you're getting here is the same as this solution. Okay, can you do it in frame two and then rotate to one? Yes. Essentially, you can take the derivative first and then rotate, or you can rotate and then take the derivative. As long as taking the derivative is according to the golden formula. Okay, then you can swap the order. You, you can arrive at your final result in different methods, okay? And I, I don't care which method you choose, but you care which method you choose because some will take you too long, okay? So you need to practice and please do these suggested exercises just to time how long it takes you to do stuff. Because I, I had a student, I think, roughly three years ago, and, and he told me I had, hate cross products. I do everything in frame zero, and then I rotate. And then he overcomplicated himself just because of this choice. When, something, when you need to, say, work in frame three, sometimes it will be too troublesome to bring everything to frame zero and then bring everything back to frame three. Okay, so pick your method and, and give it some practice. Okay, uh, next, sorry, uh, next exercise still about this, this problem. This is to find the angular acceleration. So we did, we did this one, we did this one, and now we are here. Okay, so this from angular velocity to angular acceleration. And the question is to find the absolute angular acceleration of link two expressed in frame one, okay? Or you can also say absolute angular acceleration of frame two expressed in frame one because frame two and link two are attached, okay? <coughs> so I'm just applying the golden formula again which I will be doing throughout this lecture over and over again. This time, you know guys, I should be smarter and I, I should prepare this golden formula once and bring it every time again. So V dot in frame F equals V prime plus omega F cross V F. Okay, so don't touch this, don't touch. Okay, and now what is our, what is our VF? In this case, the angular velocity, right? We want to apply the golden formula to find the angular acceleration. So we are starting with uh, angular velocity. And in this case, the absolute angular velocity in frame one. So our F is one and our V is omega two. Okay? So let's substitute into this formula. What do we have? You can either look Okay, or try to 
maybe, maybe for a sec, trust that it will stay here. Try not to look, try to substitute this, okay? So, so to, to write it down, not by copying, but just like from understanding. How to calculate omega two dot in frame one. That should be omega two prime <coughs> in frame one plus the absolute angular acceleration, sorry, angular velocity of the frame in which we take the derivative. That frame is what? One. one. So it has to be omega one, okay? Also in frame one. Cross with the vector itself. So that is omega two. All right? Now, omega 2, we found it in the angular velocities lecture. Omega 2, recall that it is, I'll go to the problem itself. Link to its absolute angular velocity would be affected by both alpha and beta. Okay, so the direction is z, okay? Either z1, z2, z0, they are all parallel, and its magnitude is alpha dot plus beta dot, okay? If you don't remember, go back to the angular velocities lecture, okay? Now, in this particular case, um, again, in this particular case, these two vectors happen to be parallel because this is zero, zero alpha dot and z this one is zero, zero alpha dot plus beta dot. They are parallel. If you do the cross product of parallel vectors, you get a zero vector. So in this particular case, this one will contribute nothing, okay? And this one will be alpha double dot plus beta double dot in the z component. Uh, but I repeat, only in this particular case, which is two-dimensional, two yeah, planar example, it's not always going to cancel, remember, all right? Another cause of common mistake. Okay, uh, have a look quickly. Is it all clear? Super clear, extra clear, outstanding clear, okay. Uh, next example, next problem, okay, this don't touch. So this is this rotating wing Okay, do you remember these examples already? By heart or clear? Hopefully you revise the previous lectures. Remember I told you it's a very pyramid structure subject. So you should remember the past to understand this thing. Um, we are trying to find, let, let's, let's say in words what we are trying to find the absolute linear velocity of point C. I, I'm, not, I'm not really reading it, I know it's written, but okay. I, I should ask you to not read this and try to read this because in, say, I, I can ask you, find the absolute linear velocity of point C expressed in frame zero, okay? And you need to figure out how to apply the formulas. Right, so you need to understand the meaning behind this notation, all the dots and R's and, okay? So it's a velocity because it's R dot. It's absolute because it is relative to point O, which is a, a fixed point, a, a stationary point. As this system rotates, um, 
point O remains fixed, right? If it weren't, it would be just uh, relative to <coughs> of point C, okay? So because it the vector is R dot O C expressed in frame zero, okay? So in order to use the golden formula, what is our V? What is our V? We are doing this first one. So this should be our V, the position vector. So R, A, C, sorry, O, C, in frame zero. <laughs> OK? Now, uh, substituting, so w what else? We need this omega. Our f is 0, so omega 0. Frame 0 is fixed, it's stationary. So this is simply all zeros, right? As a result, this cross product gives us the 0 vector. Okay, if in the exam you want to write the 0 vector as just 0, please put an arrow on top. Otherwise, it's, it, it will be taken as a scalar. Okay, so either use this or this. Okay, now this one, ROC in zero, how to get it? If you, if, like if I tell you, if it doesn't appear on the slide, if I tell you quickly find it, what do you do? Uh, we go to lecture about <laughs> position vectors and we revise it, no, 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 no. You should, you should already be with me. So express it in which frame? Frame two, which is then zero, zero minus L. Okay, and then use rotation from two to one, one to zero, you get it. Okay? And then do the component by component time derivative. Okay, and this is it. Oops. Any questions? What about uh, trying a different method? Another way, right? Another way. I don't know, English. So, well, uh, what will be another way to find ROC dot in frame zero. You have infinity ways. But. Express, okay, so express in frame two, so I'm, I'm with you, you're, you're committed now. And then, <coughs> rotation matrix, which one? Sorry? Okay, so are you suggesting to rotate it towards frame zero? Yes, but then you will do what we just did. You will find this one and then take the derivative in zero. Okay. Okay, so from here, go to ROC dot in frame two, right? And wait, how, how to get that? Yeah. And then, <coughs> two, two, 
great. Any other methods? Come on. You know. So let's do let's do an exercise. Let's do an exercise after the break, but I will define it now just in case you want to start <coughs> uh, during the break. So let's do like that. So the extremities of the room, there and there, you will be option one. Option one would be to, to do this. Okay? Option one, option one, to do this. Okay? And check that you are getting the same thing. The middle section, you will be option two, which I will define here. Here is another 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 way um, and that is let's say to start with ROC in frame 2 then get ROC in frame 1 then use the golden formula to get ROC dot in frame 1 and then rotate what? to zero using rotation matrix, okay? So uh, this one uses rotation matrix from two to one. This one, rotation matrix from one to zero. Anyway, you guys, like, you're not spared. You, you need to do that anyway. Here, yeah, use both of them. And this one uses the golden formula. So essentially, the difference between all these methods is uh, in which frame you apply the golden formula. Here in frame two, in frame one, and in frame zero. OK? So let's take some break or not. <laughs> You're free. OK? I'll, I'll put some music on. Uh, sorry? Keep it going. Keep it going. You can't? Actually, um, I'll, I'll keep it on.
Okay, let's continue. Um, so, let's take, uh, by the way, for those who sacrifice their uh, break, did anyone finish? No? Sorry? Did anyone finish? By finish, I mean got the same uh, result by using the method I specified. Okay, I see no hands up. So how about another five minutes or so? And then we can, I, I can, I want to see whether it's clear, whether you get me, or I will just continue the rest of the lecture talking to myself. Let, let's have another five minutes, all right? Is anyone stuck? By the way, like, I, I saw someone coming. If, if you are sitting in the middle section of the room, you will need to apply uh, rotation metrics for the vector ROC in frame two, which is zero, zero minus L. Okay, get it in frame one, then apply the golden formula, which is this one, okay? In frame one, and then rotate the result to frame zero. Okay, then compare correctness. If you are sitting on the sides of the room, um, take the derivative in frame z uh, sorry frame 2 already and then rotate the result twice i'm missing a dot here so. yeah sorry you got it satisfaction okay What you can do after the lecture, find a pair from the other option, compare perhaps the length of your workings, uh, see if there is any change, uh, any difference, or try to think how it would be easiest to, to obtain the result. Any questions, any, any lost? People, you're good? Is it clear? I'll just go around the room to have some observation. Uh, please bring writing tools to my lectures, all right? Because I, I like making you active. I'm not judging, seriously. I'm just observing.
what's the frame? Zero. Done? Yeah, got it? <laughs> You're too quiet. <laughs> yeah? Can I see? For the cross product, the Y component. Were you in the morning lecture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm, I'm correcting. Better now. I'm seriously not judging. It's it's late. It's Friday. Come on. It's dynamics. <laughs> Any luck around here? You got it? Yeah. Very good. If, if you got it, you're in the right direction. I, I expect you to get H1. <laughs> OK. So guys, uh, let's move on. But it's a good exercise. Continue it afterwards if you didn't finish. OK, but I did get a confirmation from some people that all the different methods work. And this is what I want you to get from this lecture, you can do what I call frame acrobatics. You can do stuff in one frame, uh, then rotate, okay? So different methods. One thing you cannot do, maybe, um, can I have your attention? This is what you cannot do. You cannot do the prime in one frame and just that prime rotate to another frame and assume that it is the prime of the other frame. Okay? So the prime is like a creature living in its own frame. Okay? When you rotate it, it, it doesn't carry the meaning of the term by term derivative for the other frame as well. Okay? It would be just, a, just some rotated vector. Do you understand what I just said? Okay. Let's move on. Um, okay, so this slide is our double dot. Yeah, so this slide is the second transition. So starting from the R dot from the previous slide, the velocity, we need to get the acceleration. If, if we already got it in frame zero, and we need to get the acceleration in frame zero, we may just as well 
work, keep working in frame zero, okay? Is this step clear? Is this application of the golden formula clear? Just the prime, why? Because frame zero has no rotation, okay? So the omega zero is the zero vector, so it's just term by term derivative. Yes, these are long. Uh, they, they, le length is, you know, in the eye of the observer, but normally people complain, use MATLAB if you don't like. I, I don't know what to tell you because these, this is the physics that we have, okay? If you use alpha and beta to uh, describe this system, if you use alpha and beta to model this system, the acceleration of the absolute linear acceleration of point C expressed along the axis of frame zero would be this, okay? That's it. This is what we have in physics, okay? And why don't we keep going to triple dot? Why, why are we satisfied with double dot? Sorry? <laughs> Say? No meaning. No meaning. It has a meaning. <laughs> this meaning is the second derivative with time, and why don't we calculate the third derivative in time? Why, okay, why do we do this? Acceleration, why do we need acceleration? To get force, right? If you recall Newton's law, we would need acceleration, not third derivative in time, okay? Why force equals mass times acceleration, roughly speaking? This is how it is, okay? <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, I, I've got n no answer. Okay, uh, moving on, this co sa uh, same example, yeah, this link, rotating link. Now we need to calculate the acceleration of the wing. Sorry, angular acceleration of the wing expressed in frame zero. Okay, the reason it is absolute, uh, who said, someone said because it's fixed, the reason, sorry, I, I lost my pointer, uh, so why do I say absolute angular acceleration here? Because, not because of this zero, not because of the two kind of comma zero, or two nothing, okay? So two, which two is the label of this wing, link number two, relative to the non-moving space, okay? And this could be, ex this, omega two dot could be expressed in any frame and still be absolute angular acceleration of the wing, okay? In this particular example, we want to find this, uh, this value, sorry, this quantity in uh, frame zero, okay? Uh, think of the different ways you can get it. Now, if you start with this starting point, say you already calculated the absolute angular velocity of the wing, and you express this vector in frame one, okay, where do you go? You can, I mean, in order to get this one as the final result, two uh, immediate methods come to mind. Either first rotating to frame zero 
the vector itself and then taking the derivative or taking the derivative according to the golden formula in frame one and then rotating the result to frame zero. Okay? Um, so the next slide would probably do the, so first here it was rotated and then there would be the derivative in frame zero already. Okay, let's try the other method. Okay, let's try together. So we are doing this one now, yeah. So, what is our vector v if we want to apply the golden formula in frame 1? Our v in this case would be omega 2 in frame 1. Sorry? All good? Um, and then let's let's apply the f the formula. So omega two dot in frame one would be omega two prime plus what should I write here? Omega one y one because of f. I'm using the golden formula in frame one because of this one. So omega one in frame one cross with the vector itself. Okay? What is this one? What is in this example? Maybe I'll go back. Uh, what is omega one in frame one? So frame one rotates. Okay, zero zero alpha dot. Good teaching. Okay. <laughs> what is this one? <coughs> yes. So minus beta dot which is, if it was like this, zero, zero, it would be, it would correspond to the angular velocity. If it were zero, zero, this would be the angular velocity of the wing relative to the vertical link, okay? But this, we are interested here in the absolute one, so they are summed, okay? this one and this one. Okay, and plus, now what is this? This is simple, just term by term derivative of our vector. So, minus beta double dot, zero alpha double dot. Okay, so what are we getting? So here it will be minus beta double dot and then plus nothing and then nothing plus this, right? So minus alpha dot beta dot, yeah? And here alpha double dot plus nothing, okay? Check me, any approvals, any mistakes? Okay, let's see, let's see. So now, omega two dot in frame zero, which we are after, would be from this, how do I get to here? Rotation matrix from one to zero times this one. Okay, do it. Can you do it? What is the rotation matrix from one to zero? I think I already wrote it. Just simple rotation by alpha about z. Okay. 
So cos alpha sine alpha Okay, and then we need to check whether the result matches the next slide, which would be what? If this is omega 2 in 0, yeah, so this is the rotation matrix here. Um, in order to get omega 2 dot in 0, I just take the term by term or component by component derivative of this one. Right? So check whether it will be equal to this product. Okay? Yes, no, good, bad, okay. And final, final example for today. Uh, this system, okay? And for this one, we are doing, I, I should really, sorry. So, what, what was it? Uh, RAD dot, right? So, RAD dot in frame one. What is the verbal name of this thing? Now, it happened that A is a fixed point. Okay. So it would be absolute uh, linear velocity of point D. Now, two things. Here, absolute. This is because A is fixed, is a fixed point, okay, non-moving. And when we talk about linear velocities, it's always of, of some points, okay, not of a body, okay. Linear velocity of a point. Angular velocity of a body, okay, or a frame. Okay, don't, don't mix it up. Okay, if you come to ask me uh, about angular velocity of some point, it rings a bell. Okay, angular velocity of a body. Linear velocity of a point. Okay, and then expressed in frame one. Okay, so is frame one fixed? No. Remember we said, I defined in previous lectures, frame one to be attached to the T-bar which is rotating, okay? rotating by this omega. Omega is the angular rate of change of this T-bar rotation about, in this case, Y1 axis, okay? For this example, we don't need to define a stationary frame zero. We're fine to work without it, okay? So in order to apply the golden formula in frame one, okay, we would need uh, to, to start from the vector RAD in frame one, okay? So it would be, if we want to do RAD dot, yeah, it's written here, I feel so stupid. Uh, RAD prime in frame one plus omega 
one because we are taking the derivative in frame one, so absolute angular velocity of frame one cross with the vector itself that we are taking derivative of, which is the position vector. Okay, and this position vector we got when we were talk, doing the lecture about position vectors. Okay, you can you can check. And what is this omega? It is uh, easy to describe in frame one. The axis of rotation of frame one is y one, and the magnitude of this vector is the uh, angular rate of change, which is defined here as omega, okay, in the radians per second. By the way, after today's lecture, you can finish assignment one. So you, you will have all the material. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this one is zero omega zero, okay? This one is here, and this one is the term by term or component by component derivative here, okay? So let me move uh, to the solution. Um, so if you, if you do all the, all the algebra, you should get to here, okay? Um, th this was part of an exam question, okay? It, don't be shocked. Uh, <laughs> you, you will see it when you start practicing uh, for the exam, you will see this is one of the questions. And it's, it's not too bad, okay? Um, okay, now I have a very important remark, okay? So we got the linear velocity of point D in frame one, and let's say I, huh, so the question in that exam, remember how I defined gamma because here gamma is unclear, and point D is also like undefined clearly, but I did say verbally, point D is defined such that when gamma is zero, where is point D? Touching the platform, so at the bottom of the wheel, okay? So if I want to think about slip of this wheel on the platform, I would need to evaluate the velocity of point D, the linear velocity of point D, when that point is in contact with the platform. So in other words, to evaluate the velocity of point D when gamma is zero, okay? Now, this is the important bit. You first take the parametric derivative of the position of D. So you first do RAD dot in general, where gamma is a variable, and only at the end, after, after you get to here, what you do is substituting gamma equals zero to evaluate the velocity of point D in the instant that D is at the bottom of the wheel. Because if you first substitute gamma equals zero, and then you take the derivative, you, you would kill too many terms, it, it won't have a, a meaningful result, okay? <clears throat> so I, I will give you, I'll, I'll dwell on this point a bit. If I tell you, you have a function f of x equals, say, 3x squared plus sine x, whatever, okay? And I tell you, find f prime of, say, minus 5. What do you do? You first take the derivative of, you, so you first find 
this in general, right? And then, yes, then substitute x equals minus 5. You don't do it the other way around, OK? The same in dynamics, OK? You first, if, if you need to evaluate velocity, for a certain uh, set of parameters, you first calculate the parametric velocity, then you substitute the parameters. And if you need to evaluate the acceleration for a given set of parameters, you go to your velocity parametrically, and from there you get your acceleration parametrically, that is, in general, for any values of parameters, and only f at the very final step, you substitute your parameters, OK? This is what you will need to do for the assignment wherever you have uh, finite, final values to substitute. Last year, uh, last years, I didn't give any parameters to substitute. And so the, the solutions were long expressions. So A was like a huge expression, B was a huge expression, C was a huge expression, and students complained that it takes them more time to select the correct option than to reach the correct option in terms of calculation. So now you will need to substitute, but remember, the substitution is the final step in your working. OK, is it clear? In the exam, don't evaluate before taking derivatives. Is it clear? Good. OK. now. Uh, this is the, the final, final slide. Wow, we are early. So in words, what is, uh, don't read. <laughs> what is, what was it, omega 3 in frame, dot in frame 1? So how do you call this guy? <clears throat> okay, so I, I get this answer, absolute angular acceleration of frame 3 expressed in frame 1. And I will remind you that frame 3 is attached to which body, do you remember? If frame 1 moves together with the t-bar, frame 2 was with the rod, yeah? And what's frame 3? Attached to the wheel, OK? So this is the absolute angular acceleration of the wheel expressed in frame 1, the black frame 1, OK? Remember, uh, I mean, it, it's not just for fun that I do the, the verbal definition, because I will often ask you, find the uh, absolute angular, maybe I'll write it down. Uh, find the absolute angular acceleration of the wheel expressed in frame 1. And then you need to know to find this. And I have a lot of, a lot of students doing the wrong, wrong thing, either doing velocity instead of acceleration, or linear instead of angular, or not the absolute one, some relative one. Or, well, th this one is rare to not adhere to the frame, but remember all of these things, OK? It, it's tricky, but you need to understand the, the meaning of what you're finding, OK? Now, when we are going to talk about um, angular uh, momentum here, so we will not use that very often. This will be used often because doing this with the linear momentum and doing 
doing like getting this one will be quite the same, or just difference with the mass. But doing this will be kind of similar, but not quite exactly like finding angular acceleration. Okay, not exactly. So how to find? Just we can apply the golden formula in frame one. Remember that as you apply it in frame one, uh, this this part in the formula is like built in. If you are working, if you take the derivative in frame one, you need to use the absolute angular velocity of frame one. Okay, absolute angular velocity of frame one because you take the derivative in frame one, or you apply the golden formula in frame one. Okay, don't don't get mixed up, and the rest is as we just chewed over and over <laughs> today, right? Uh, notice here that uh, these are not parallel; they are not the same. They are not parallel, and so the result is not the zero vector. So don't assume that it will always get cancelled if, if you are working with angular velocities to get angular accelerations. Very often, especially in 3D problems, it, it will not get cancelled. Okay, this cross product. All right, now how, how to find this one? Let's do a, a quick reminder because we have a lot of time. How to get omega 3 in frame 1? Omega 3 in frame 1. <coughs> I see people yawning, like, just let us go. <laughs> Come on, this one, and you can go. <laughs> okay, who, who is talking? Who is talking? Who is talking? Three relative to two in frame one. Yes. 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 Okay, keep going. What? <laughs> someone else, someone else. Yeah. Um, any volunteers? <clears throat> Don't you want to go home? <laughs> My daughter is hungry. Come on. <laughs> no, she has she has stuff. <laughs> no no child was abused. Okay. <laughs> Rotation from, let's do this. So 2 to 1, 3 to 2 in frame 2. What is this one here? I'll bring back the, the slides. Uh, <coughs> so, okay, plus, and these ones, is it, can you find it straight away? So, omega 3 relative to 2, what would that be? 3 relative to 2 expressed in frame 2. Gamma dot 0, 0. Okay, what is this one? Frame two, frame one. And lastly, zero omega zero. Have a nice weekend. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>
It's all relative to that. So an example to, so that's frame two with respect to the joint, right? So we were trying to calculate um, ROC, right? In, uh, we had to find ROC in frame zero. You said to, yeah, it does. And you said try doing, fi finding ROC two and then rotating it. So I tried it. So I wanted to figure out if this is the right angular velocity. Or omega no. Absolutely. No, no, no. How? no. Yeah. This is of the wing relative to the vertical axis. So this would be 2, 1. 2, relative to 1, yes. Okay, and so what would be 2, 2? We also did that in the in today's lecture. Um, Early morning? No, here. Uh, wait, sorry. Uh, are you needed for my... Uh, no, but I'll be just in two, two okay, Can you just wait for one minute? Okay.
plus omega 2 relative to 1 is by 2. Yeah. How much? <laughs>
when alpha changes, mm -hmm. this one rotates as well, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Go home. Yeah. Celebrate. One hour? No, no, she's not. She's not hungry. She's drinking my milk, uh, but 